In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Westwood Clipper Ride-On Lawnmower. Manufactured in 1990, the Clipper offered those with a small or tight garden with a highly maneuverable alternative to the traditional tractor-style lawnmower. The Clipper is fitted with a Briggs & Stratton 8 horsepower electric start engine and also has a 25.5 inch cutting deck. The most fascinating feature about the Clipper is its ability to turn 360 degrees on the spot. This is more commonly known as a zero turn lawnmower. I will be demonstrating this later in the video. It also has no rear wheels, instead it features a full width roller to create a nice stripe which leaves a clean and smart finish. The Westwood Clipper could be purchased new for less than £1,000, $995 to be precise. Using this handy tool on the Bank of England website, I discovered that £995 in 1990 equates to roughly £2,300 in today's money. Anyway, to demonstrate this unique machine properly, I had to find one, which, as it turns out, wasn't too hard. There are still quite a few of these around. As you can see, this one is complete, and apart from a bit of rust here and there, it looks to be in great condition. I'm sure many people will be wondering how much I paid for this one, and in fact I got it for just less than £100, which I would consider a real bargain. It's fully working with the exception of the carburetor, so let's get it into the workshop and find out exactly what it needs. I've just removed this bracket from the front that holds on the front section of this panel. We also have two screws which I'm about to remove and I've already removed the bolt at the back. So this will reveal the drive pulley just underneath here and it will also make it easier to remove the carburetor. With the central PTO plate removed as well, you can see the very simple drive setup here. It is simply just a belt which runs from the engine to this PTO pulley block, and that can be tensioned and detensioned from the foot pedal. But you actually have the main PTO engagement as well, which is just here, and that will detension and tension the two belts which run to each of the two drive wheels. As far as I can tell, the whole belt system setup is actually a really good design. The only issue which has been noticed over the years is the bevel gears in this little housing here. There are two drive gears and they can wear out. So you do sometimes see these for sale uh, with the drive issue and those parts are not available, but you might be able to get them custom made or you might be able to strip down another one to be able to get that part out of it. But yeah, to put it simply, I've had a few of these clippers over the past few years and none of them have had that issue, but I have seen quite a few as well, which do have that issue. So obviously it is the most common drive problem. Uh, with that being said though, this one is fine. So we can drive this one, hopefully very soon. I just need to sort out the carburetor and then we'll see what it's like to use. Oh, and in case you're wondering, I fitted the new fuel line because the original one was very perforated. And then I just put a bit of fuel in and discovered the carburetor issue. And the reason why that just fell out is because it doesn't have an air filter. That should actually sit inside the foam filter. So there we have the carburetor. It's a bit dirty on the outside, but yeah, we don't really care about what's on the inside. So let's just take a look in here. If it does need a clean, I will clean it thoroughly on the outside as well, because it just makes sense. Okay, so we do have some corrosion, which is interesting. Wow, that's worse than I was expecting. So it looks like the float is stuck, totally stuck. It does move with persuasion, but it's not moving freely. 
that should drop down automatically. So uh, yeah, this just needs a really good clean. Sometimes when you have that much rust, you need to be concerned about any perforations. I will actually sandblast the bowl, which I know is gonna encourage holes to appear, but if it is that weak, then yes, the bowl should be replaced anyway. Uh, as for the float, I'm hoping it can just be cleaned up. You can replace these floats relatively cheaply, but it obviously slows everything down because I don't have any in stock. But I do have the carb rebuild kit. The carb rebuild kit is part number 394-698. So yeah, everything except for the bowl and the, uh, the float is in there. After cleaning up the carburetor, it all seems to be fine and the float is good as well. So I now have the new parts. Let's open this up. So that is the washer for the bottom of the bowl. And here we have all of the others, all the other parts required to rebuild the carburetor. There's some more gaskets in there, but we probably won't even need those. As for the bowl itself, you can see that really did come out quite nicely. And I just gave it a quick spray of paint just to make it look a bit neater. Okay, so we have all the new parts here, except for this one here, uh, which wasn't included for whatever reason, I'm not too sure why. So that one's gonna have to be cleaned up. I'm sure it's gonna be possible. It's not actually that bad at all. Uh, parts like this one, this nozzle here, it's very bad. So yeah, let's get that cleaned up, get it all reassembled and uh, we'll put it back on the machine and see if it runs.
I've already done all the checks. I've made sure it's got enough oil. I've had a camera in the bore to make sure it's all nice and clean, which it is. And I've also checked to make sure there's no mouse nest underneath the cover for the engine. And yes, everything is nice and clean. So the next step is to put fuel in, make sure it doesn't overflow again, and then see if it starts. It is great to see the clipper running again, and I'm about to demonstrate this in some longer grass, which is probably considered far too long for this machine. You will notice I do get very carried away, because driving this machine is great fun. Exactly like driving a Dodgem or a bumper car, although I did actually make a few mistakes while mowing the grass, since I was turning the wheels 360 degrees, but I'd have been better off just turning them at 90 degrees to turn. Anyway, you'll see for yourself, it really was great fun. All that's left to do is to put the grass clippings in the compost so they can rot down and create a nice mulch. There is just one more thing I want to show you before concluding this video, and it's at the back of the brochure. It's a photograph taken on the production line and you can see the clippers being manufactured. As a huge Westwood fan, this really did make me smile when I saw this. After all, British made for quality that lasts and lasts. Thank you for watching everybody, I really hope you've enjoyed this video about the Westwood Clipper. Maybe this is the first time you've seen this unique mower, or maybe you have some nice experiences with one. Please do let me know down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.